Dick Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Come on, you haven't seen it from this angle yet. Oh, well, don't be that way. Come on, look at that. Will you look at that shaft of moonlight shining on our tarantula? <laughs> sure does glisten. It's what? not chrome, honey. That is stainless steel. Now, oh, come on, Rich. That's enough. Hey, Rich, knock it off. That's enough now. Oh, honey, is that dreamy? Is that a motor car? Rob, it's is gorgeous. Is that good status? <laughs> the driving of it is so effortless, so smooth. You know, it's like swooning. <laughs> Who can we call? <laughs> You'd be the most jealous of him. Jerry, of course. Bob, you're gloating. Well, why not, honey? I haven't had a good gloat in the last five years since we got our last new car. Honey, did you notice the way the countersunk, the handles are countersunk? There's no wind resistance at all there. The whole car is that way, aerodynamic. Boy, even the ace race, teardrop design. Did you notice that? Did you notice you're a nut? Huh? Only about things automotive. I'll outgrow it, all right? When? Well, I don't know. When I get a new helicopter, I guess. <laughs> now, I may just chip in. I don't think you could be any more giddy about that. <laughs> hey, Jer, this is Rob. Uh, my friend. You are speaking to a gentleman who just took delivery on a brand new tarantula at the Park Avenue showrooms today. I am not. It's parked right out in front of the house right now. Come over, my friend, and take a look at this automobile. What do you mean you can't? Well, Jerry, you can go to second show, can't you? Well, what do you mean in the morning, Jerry? I'll be driving it to work in the morning. No, I, no. Uh, all right, no. Forget it, Jerry. It's, it's all right. Just forget it. Oh, my God, boy, what sour grapes that is. Well, darling, the car's gonna be here for years. I know it, honey, but the car is only new today. What's the sense of having a new car if you can't have your best friends envious of you? You know, I haven't seen this kind of behavior since Richie got his two-wheeler. Stands to reason he'd be jealous, him and his 1958 Edsel. <laughs> you know, the front seat on that thing is like a divan. And an automatic transmission, you know what that's for? It's for old ladies. But boy, this car, bucket seats and that stick shift. <laughs> uh, you know, you nestle down on that thing like an astronaut. Yeah, Rob, I took the station wagon in for a tune-up. Good, honey. Good to get in there and keep it in tune. Yeah. Wait, they're going to have to have it for a day. That's all right. So as long as you listen, I want that thing in A1, top, shape, go, go, go condition for my family. Yeah. <laughs> Richie. You know what the great thing about this car is? That you can't bring it into the house. No. <laughs> no, the thing is so far ahead of its time. You know something? Three, four years from now, this car will still be wet. Rich, cut it out. Doggone it. It's probably getting the sneakers all over the upholstery. <laughs> Rich, hey, knock it off. Now come on in here right now. He's getting his dirty feet all over the seats, honey. Rich! Oh. <laughs> Not funny, it's British. And who says the British have no sense of humor? Look, Rich, this car is not the old station wagon. I don't want any candy wrappers or gum or lollipops on the seats. I don't want any taffy or gunky stuff in the ashtrays. Rich, are you listening to me? Darling, if you want him to listen, you're going to have to take off the hat. <laughs> Richie, why don't you go wash your hands up for dinner now, huh? L listen, okay. Listen to Daddy, and I'll take you for riding the car tomorrow, okay? Okay. <laughs> Honey, look at that. When you look at a car like that, what do you feel? Extreme fear. <laughs> fear? Why fear? Because I have to ask you if I can use it tomorrow. <laughs> what? See? <laughs> why? Well, darling, I told you the station wagon is in the shop. Well, hi, you, tomorrow. You, I, there's, Buddy and Sally haven't even seen it yet, honey. I, I, oh, honey, look, if you want it shopping done, I'll pick up whatever you want on the way home. Rob, I have to have the car. I have to drive Richie to school. It's my turn for the carpool. You're going to put that pool in my car, honey? <laughs> You're going to put a dozen kids in that... Darling, there aren't a dozen. 
poison. Well, I don't care. There might as well be for crying out loud candy wrappers and little snips of paper and gunk all over it. They'll ruin a new car smell with their peanut butter sandwich smell. I'll put their lunches in the trunk. There is no trunk. That is the auxiliary motor. Huh. <laughs> all those kids there yelling in your ear all the time, you're going to run into some. Oh, darling, I won't. I'm a careful driver. You know that. <laughs> darling, I wouldn't ask you, but Sadie Stein has taken my carpool turn the last three times. Oh, but honey, the first day. I, I haven't even driven it myself in the daytime yet. Oh, you, something can run into you, you know. I'll drive 10 miles an hour in the right-hand lane with a horn going all the way. Well, all right. I, I don't want anything to happen to that car. Oh, darling, don't be ridiculous. What could happen? Beautiful, she's fast, and she doesn't make a sound. Beautiful, fast, and quiet? Impossible. There's no such woman. <laughs> hey, what's he talking about? I fell in love with a tarantula. So what? I married one. <laughs> oh, you got the new car, huh? Oh, yeah. You got the new tea bug? Real sweet, huh? Oh, it is the ultimate. Yeah? Hey, you ever seen one of those tarantulas? No. They are built so close to the ground, if you want to get in, you got to come up through a manhole. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, this one, when you get in it, it's got those great little bucket seats, you know? You know what's wrong with bucket seats? Everybody got a different size bucket. <laughs> hey, Rob, you gonna take us for a drive in Central Park during lunch? I can't. I left it at home. You left Central Park at home? I mean, the first day you didn't even bring the car down? Gosh, I thought you'd park it right here in the office. Oh, boy, I would have, except it was Laura's day to take the kids to school. You let Laura drive your new bed bug? Tarantella. Tarantula. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I don't know why I left it her with a bunch of kids yelling in her ear. Boy, when I get a new car, I won't even let Pickles in it. If we have to go someplace, I just drive and she runs along. <laughs> That's what I'm so worried about. Anyway, Laura happens to be a wonderful driver. All women are wonderful drivers. It's just that those men designers have done everything they can to confuse us. First, they put the starter on the dashboard. Then they put it on the floor next to the accelerator. Then it's on the left, then it's on the right. First, they put the stick shift on the floor. Then they put it on the wheel, and it's automatic. Then they put it between the two seats, and it's not automatic. Do you know that I once pushed in a cigarette lighter on the highway, and I went in reverse? <laughs> I'll just check and see if she's been smoking on the highway. Hello? Laura? Yes, Rob, what is it? Well? Well, what? How was she? Who? Our tarantula, honey. How'd she handle? Oh, beautifully. Good. You didn't have any trouble with the stick shift, did you? No, no trouble with a stick shift. That's my girl. <laughs> Do you love that car? Yes, darling, I, I really love it. You, you sound strange, honey. Well, it's uh, probably the connection. I... Well, honey, I forgot to tell you something. Listen, don't park that car under a tree or under a bird. <laughs> oh, and listen, get it into the garage tonight before the dew falls, okay? Yes, darling, I will. Oh, Rob, there's somebody at the door. I have to hang up now. Do you love that car? Yes, Rob, I really love it. We'll talk about it tonight, huh? Okay. Bye, dear. Bye. She loves it. Hi, I just came over oh, to ask Millie the most horrible thing. What, what? Rob's new car. Yeah, it looks like a dead bug. <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah, this morning when you picked up the kids. Oh, Millie. I was driving so carefully, Millie. And I went to the market to get a bunch of bananas. And I parked it so carefully, Millie, I wasn't in that store for five minutes. And when I came out... What? What happened? A scratch. A scratch? Not a scratch, a scratch. Where? In the front of the rear? Yes. Wait. Oh, it goes all the way from the front fin to the back wing. Oh, Millie, what am I going to do? Rob will kill me. Well, first, you better get hold of yourself. But this wasn't the first time a car was ever scratched, you know. It's the first time for this one. That's what's so awful, Millie and Rob warned me. Oh, well, they always warn you. What good does that do? <laughs> the car's insured, isn't it? Yes, but I'm not. <laughs> Millie, Rob will kill me when he finds out. Well, why does he have to find out? Get it repaired and don't tell him. 
Don't tell him, Millie. When he gets home tonight, he's going to kiss the car before he kisses me. Well, maybe they can fix it in a day. Not before he gets home. Well, make an appointment for tomorrow. But he's going to want to drive the car to town tomorrow. Well, stall him. Don't let him. You can think of some excuse. Oh, Millie, he's going to be wild. Just wild. Tell us the, the garage to keep your station wagon for another day, and that'll give you an excuse. Well, what about tonight? I mean, the minute he goes into that garage... Which side is the scratch on? The right. Why? What difference does that make? Well, he gets in on the left, and if you park it close to the wall and steal a light bulb from the garage, it'll be dark and he won't see a thing. He won't see a thing. But, gee, Millie, that seems so sneaky, though, not letting him know. Well, believe me, he'd rather not know. <laughs> you don't think it's dishonest? Well, sure it's dishonest. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> Hi. Hey, you're a good girl. Why? Because you didn't leave my car under a sappy tree. You put it in the garage. <laughs> hey, honey, let's go for a drive, huh? What, before dinner? Sure, just a short spin. Come on. No, but, Rob, I have to get dinner ready. We'll have dinner out, honey. Come but no, on. what about Richie? We'll take Richie along. He'll love it. No, but he has to do his homework. That's all right, honey. We'll leave him here. And just you and me will go just up the parkway. We'll be right back. Well, Rob, we can't leave Richie alone. We'll get a sitter for a quick sit. No, no. Rob. <laughs> Such a terrible headache all day. You'll ha really have to excuse me. Oh, well, then I'm sorry, honey. Well, look, why don't you go in, lie down, take a little nap, and I'll be right back, okay? But, uh, Rob... Honey, I just want to put a few miles on it. I'll be right back. But, Rob... Honey, you didn't expect me to have dinner before I put some mileage on my tarantula, did you? No, I guess not. <laughs> Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on that doorstep. <clears throat> What you doing? Yeah, don't get up on mommy that way, okay? Daddy sure been gone a long time. No, it just seems a long time. Stop a minute, be quiet. Not him. <laughs> Seems forever. What does? The way you're eating. Well, you told me to stop. Well, finish it up. <laughs> Mommy? Yes. What? Shh. Stop a minute. It's Daddy! Sit still. Act as if nothing happened. What did? Nothing. <laughs> 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 Bought a new car, right? <laughs> Brand new car. So what happened? Darling, it's not really that bad. It's not that bad. I try out the windshield wiper, the knob falls off in my hand. How do you like that? <laughs> Is that all, honey? A brand new tarantula is supposed to have all of the bugs out of it. Listen, darling, I've got a great idea. Why don't you leave the car with me tomorrow, and I'll take it into the shop. They can put the knob back on and check all the bugs. Oh, no, I'm taking it back tomorrow to the guy who sold it to me. He's making it good. Yeah, but, Rob... I am going in first thing in the morning. Rob, you can't. What? Richie, dear, if you finished eating, would you go to your room, please? Well, yeah, but I still have grapes. Well, I tell you what, darling, you can finish them up in your room, huh? Well, you always say I'm not allowed. Oh, you're not, you don't, so this time you can, right? <laughs> what was that all about? Rob, I have to have the car again tomorrow. And you, uh, knew I'd yell, so you sent Richie out of the room. <laughs> Am I, Rob? They still didn't get my car back from the shop. Doggone it, why can't Millie take her? It's her turn. Well, Millie has her car in the shop, too, Rob. I she don't... thought I'd have yours. Well, why can't I ever have my own car? Everybody else gets it. Why can't Richie walk just one time? It wouldn't hurt him a bit. All that way? When I was a kid, I walked twice that far, and I was a puny runt. <laughs> I'm going out. What are you going to do? I am going to sit in my car. Maybe the only chance I get. If I can't drive it, at least I can smell it. Are you going to work without having breakfast? 
breakfast? Uh, well, have some instant coffee, honey. I'll pick up something. Well, why didn't you wake me? Well, I wasn't sure you'd be speaking to me. I was going to leave a note. Wrong. Honey, look, I'm sorry me about too. last night. <laughs> honey, I was just a loose knob, I know. It wasn't like getting sap on the hood or something like that. <laughs> you know how I am about a new car, honey. I just hate anything that's imperfect. But, you know, I know it's ridiculous, I admit it. I thought you were upset with me because I have to have the car again today. Oh, honey, don't be silly. I'll call a taxi like I did yesterday. Oh, darling, that's awfully nice of you. Well, I mean, not for me, for you. Huh? Well, I'm taking the car. Well, what about Richie? Honey, he'll take the taxi to school. Well, children don't take taxis to school. Good, then we'll be pioneers for a change. Kids will love it. Look, they'll watch the meter jump up and down. It's educational. Come on, let them go in style for a change. Oh, Rob. Oh, hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Rob, you gonna cry? See, Bushy even made him feel bad. Rob, what's the matter? Well, he's either got a toothache or somebody stepped on his tarantula. <laughs> Something happened to your new bug? It is now an old bug. With an eight-foot scratch. Oh. <laughs> Yesterday, she talked me out of the car. She took it herself. Very persuasive young lady. She tried it again today, but not quite so persuasive today. She let me have a car. And I drove into town smiling and happy. The king of the highway. And when I got into town, you wrecked the bug. No, I found it had a great big scratch. Oh, who scratched it, Laura? No. I parked it at the, at the center garage just to be safe. I had forgot to leave the keys. It couldn't have been two minutes. I went back and there it was, like somebody took a nail and... <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, take it easy. It's only paint. It'll heal. I took every precaution. I went to a covered garage. I, within 30 seconds... <laughs> Why didn't she talk me out of the car today? Well, 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 how did it happen? Who knows? Some sadist with a can opener. I don't know. <laughs> the garage says nobody ever even got near it. They said I came in with it. How do you like that? Sue. Yeah, that's right, Sue. Yeah. Oh, boy, would I like to sue. I don't, just for the principle of thing, I don't care about the money or the bother or anything else. People should not be allowed to go around scratching heavily financed tarantulas. <laughs> I'm calling my lawyer tonight. Well, well, don't wait until tonight. Call right now. What's your hurry? That a boyfriend's a lawyer? <laughs> oh, but I got a date with one tonight who wants to take me out. And if Rob doesn't call his lawyer now, instead of working, he'll be spending all day going, I'm going to sue. I'm going to sue. I'm going to sue. That's right. I'm going to sue. I am going to sue. You see? All right. All plaintiffs, come with me. Come on. Come on. Why don't you take this? Maybe it'll fix your headache. No, thanks, Millie. It won't fix the car. <laughs> Hi. Where's Marvin Birmingham's home number? Marvin? A lawyer? What do you want with Marvin? What does anybody want a lawyer for? I want to sue somebody, that's what. I was calling him in his office all day long today, and he was in the courtroom. What kind of a lawyer is he, anyway? <laughs> Who are you going to sue? I'm going to sue the person responsible for scratching my car. I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it. Well, I'm listening about the car. Just hold it. Marvin? Rob? Matt, that's how I am, buddy. Look, are you going to be there in a little while? Can I come over and talk to you? My new car. I parked it at the center garage today, and some stupid sadist ruined it. Huh? Oh, is it bad? They desecrated it. You ought to see it. There's a big scratch up and down the whole car. <laughs> Sue, that's what I want to do. I like this. Thanks, Marvin. I'll be right over. Rob, listen about the car. I feel just awful. Oh, thanks, honey. <laughs> Millie, I feel like a criminal. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to keep your fingers crossed and your little mouth shut. But I can't. You'll do it for women drivers everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Millie, it's not right. A wife shouldn't lie to her husband. Look, it wasn't your fault the car got scratched, right? But is Rob going to believe that? 
No, he's going to use it as an example against women drivers, and you'll be giving our whole wonderful sex a black eye. Oh. How can I let Rob get involved in something that's going to make him look like a fool? I've just got to tell him. I think I'd better leave. Oh, Millie, no, don't leave me. If you're here, maybe he won't kill me. He won't kill you. Listen, before you tell him the truth, give lying another chance, okay? <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Did you see Marvin? Oh, yeah. I just uh, saw him for a, a minute there. He was off one of his big meetings, you know. Rob, I don't think you ought to sue. Why, honey? Well, Rob, there's something I have to tell you. What? About the scratch on your car. What, what about it? Well, darling, it didn't really happen the way you think. Well, how then? Well... <laughs> Honey, what are you trying to say? Well, do you remember the day I drove Richie to school? That yeah. first day? Well, Rob, I, I stopped at the market. I parked it so carefully, Rob, and I wasn't in the market for more than five minutes. And when I came out, all for a bunch of bananas. You did it? No, I just told you I didn't do well, it. I know, I mean... The garage didn't do it. No, I wish they had. Rob, tell Marvin you're not going to sue. Well, uh, honey, uh, uh, he didn't think that uh, suing was a very good idea anyway. He didn't? No, he <clears throat> pointed out to me that uh, even if I won, it would still cost me more than uh, letting the insurance company handle it. Oh, Rob. Oh, honey, don't, come on. What's the cry about? It's just a little teeny scratch. It couldn't happen to anybody. You're not angry? Oh, don't be silly, honey. A little paint, it'll be good as new. That could have happened to anybody, honey. Don't worry about it. Listen, you're a good driver. It happens to good drivers. I mean, things like that uh, even happen to uh, men drivers. <laughs> honey, what, uh, what I mean is, uh, well, uh, when I left here, I was awful mad, and I didn't watch... Very well. <laughs> what happened when, when you weren't watching so well? Well, uh, you know those uh, four cement posts bare beside Marvin's driveway? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, uh, I turned in the driveway about three yards too soon. <laughs> you knocked down a post? Well, honey, it could have happened to anybody. <laughs> what about the car? Well, uh, uh, the uh, fenders are kind of like that. <laughs> But, you know, they hammer them out and sand them and paint them, and they're as good as new. Of course, those posts. Posts? You hit two of them? Well, one uh, going in and one backing out. Rob, you poor dear. Well, that, is, that ain't the worst of it, honey. Look at that hat. Oh, God! How did that happen? I was trying to help Mrs. Birmingham up off the ground, and her dog attacked me. Well, I, she fainted when I backed through her rose bushes. <laughs> so, honey, look at that. It's a British label. There's not another hat like that in town that fits me. Oh, and he, I don't know. What are you going to do? You can't sue a dog? <laughs> It's the only thing to do. You get a lemon, you take it back, right? You turn it in. The car is a jinx. First, the windshield wiper went. Rob, what happened? My brand new, beautiful car with the fingertip control and the stainless steel trim and the bucket seats ran out of gas. <laughs> How? <laughs> and I looked at the gas gauges before I left here. All right, what did it register? Empty. <laughs> I, honey, I never owned a car in my life that didn't have at least two gallons left in it when the gas gauge said empty. But boy, not that car. Oh, no, right on the button, boy. I'm getting rid of it. <laughs>